Hi, welcome back to Rodney's channel here. I wrote a, co-authored a book uh, when I was overseas, and uh, this is just going to be a, uh, a general introduction to that, that process uh, and project, uh, what the contents uh, are, and uh, you know, some of the complexities in actually uh, authoring a book going through the editing process and so forth. Uh, basically, <clears throat> my colleague asked me if I wanted to assist in a, uh, writing a few chapters on, on some topics related to business and marketing, branding, and so forth. So, yeah, I decided to uh, do it because I've been involved in those areas for uh, decades around the world. Uh, luckily, you know, the COVID scam, our COVID, sorry, COVID um, hit right around that time. So that provided me with a lot of free time, so to speak, to, to put my mind into the creative mode and start writing. Um, he defined certain areas that he wanted me to look into, that I then thus began researching. Of course, a lot of the information was related to my own experience, which is uh, obviously better than the theoretical aspect in many ways. So basically, uh, we had a timeline of, I think, nine months to have a, actually have a main version of this thing uh, to be ready for, you know, publishing uh, after editing, obviously, but um, during the first four months, I, I uh, happened to compile over 220 pages of, of content. Now, uh, of course, uh, chapters in this book, he wanted to have a range between uh, 18 pages to you know, 22 pages per, per chapter. Um, yeah, so I told him that I would uh, edit it in a way so that I could create two chapters, and he said that was fine. So I started off with the first chapter. You know, again, the research and development of, of that content. And, uh, yeah, it was it's very involving, to say the least. Uh, we had multiple uh, interactions in terms of uh, editing, uh, consultations on is it going in the direction that his other writers or co-authors are going in and doesn't fit the whole theme of the book. So basically, about uh, if I remember correctly, I had around 90 pages uh, on that particular topic of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the book. And uh, again, I was going to divide the 200 pages into two chapters, which would, of course, be a little bit different in, in content and then, of course, the title. Yeah, so in summary, those you know 87 pages uh, through the editing process went down to, uh, I believe it was uh, 20, 24 pages in the, at the, at the end of, of the editing. Now, please note that uh, this this is a scientific. Scientifically produced book. It's published by World Scientific, and um, so we followed all the steps of, of uh, you know, publishing the scientific journals and, and material. Unfortunately, even though my research and experience uh, was a fact, 
uh, he wasn't he didn't allow various conflicting uh, topics which were relevant to the topic however he said it's not going to work edit it out uh, so this is the the control mechanism in in editing and in publishing, uh, what you would like to say uh, is kind of, let's say, bent, twisted, framed, or molded to fit what they will allow it to be. So that being said, I'm still happy that I have produced something to get the message out in terms of uh, certain areas of, of language or linguistics, uh, business, and, and so on. So the title of my chapter, which is chapter seven, it's the last chapter of the book, which I think is the uh, you know, climactic uh, part of the book. Um, chapter seven, it's using neurolinguist, you're using neurolinguistic programming to build the foundation of brands, a guide for Chinese firms, because I was living in China at that time. Now, this is adaptable to any language. It's not specifically for Chinese companies and Chinese language and English. No. Uh, the, the general idea uh, you can be applied to all languages, and that's uh, you know, the basis of, of the content. We just happen to use the Chinese element as, as an example, uh, and we were in China at the time. So the... Uh, the actual title of the book is Chinese Innovation and Branding Leaps. This is the, the actual publication uh, that we have produced. It is uh, you know, publicly available through various sources. So the content are the, the, the main parts of my, uh, of my, my chapter, of the first chapter. Uh, there's the introduction, obviously. Uh, brand image, how an impression forms in the mind. NLP, the neuroscience of marketing. A deeper hitter me hidden meaning, uh, and that means the governing codes and structures of language and media. Uh, the minute language structures that govern an idea and meaning. A word's etymology. Numbers, letters, words, and mathematical code of geometry. The structure of imaginary intent. Uh, mind or the mind digests the message to seek a conclusion. Uh, my concluding uh, remarks and uh, acknowledgments, references, and so on. Now, after producing this particular chapter, we decided that I won't go for the next chapter because we're already pushing five, four and a half, five months. And there were delays, not just on my, I, I mean, I didn't actually delay anything. On the other side, there are many delays because of the COVID uh, nonsense that was going on. And uh, therefore, uh, things are starting to you know act up in terms of uh, business wise. So I started to go out and do my normal routine. And of course, um, to you know, write a book or write chapters in a book, there are many you know, hundreds or even thousands of hours that can go into it. So in the end, I decided to not continue with that second half. I still have, of course, the materials on that and the content, but that's for maybe future ed uh, editing and, and publishing. Anyhow, basically, in summary, uh, the world, this externalized world, that means what we see around us and built up, is basically all, has all been created because, because through language. Of course, mathematics are involved. Um, in fact, all language is nothing but a mathematical code. You could you can uh, connect all language through a num numerical code, and they will all lead, you know, lead to one equals, for example, a, you know, and whatever, 
in uh, whatever language we're talking about, and then you can translate that to the the other language and make the connection. Maybe it's a symbol, maybe it's in Chinese, and it really doesn't matter. That's through my, my understanding and research through the whole linguistic uh, rabbit hole. Now, since language is the foundation of the reality, we then therefore need to know what the etymology of language is. And if you are familiar with what uh, English is, English is a bastardized language. There are you know, literally hundreds of influential languages in English. Uh, the, of course, the main languages are Latin, French, German, uh, and so on. However, uh, with each language that's in, been put into English, what is the actual meaning of that new language or the language that was introduced into English? What is the true meaning of that in that language? Um, so here's where the, the problem li lies. Uh, most people are speaking English and they don't actually know what the... <laughs> what the true meaning of those words were, or were the original foundation of the word. Now, of course, we can get into many arguments over, well, the modern language means X, not Y, not the old language. Well, the foundation is the foundation. If you don't have a foundation, the whole thing collapses. It's like a house, as a metaphor. If you have a solid foundation, the building stands. If there is no foundation, the house will collapse. Uh, therefore, the original meaning is the meaning, not the, uh, let's see, colored or painted or twisted new modern meaning. And this is why when you get into law, the color of law and other other uh, areas of, of, uh, of uh, business, you know, there are different metaphors, different expressions, which a lot of people don't catch from one side to the other. If you're, you're into sports versus you're, you're a, uh, uh, a scientist, they don't communicate because the language they're using is misunderstood or, you know, whatever the expressions, body language, all that. Uh, as another, as another point, we do have written language. Then we have the spoken language, which would be, you know, the phonetic or the sound. Uh, you know, we have the prefix, suffix, all of these things uh, thrown into the, to the pot. It's, it's, it's virtually impossible for most people to ever catch what the language is telling. Because you would have to know all the phonetic sounds, all the connecting languages, all the hidden meanings. That would mean you're digging down into the etymology. Uh, you would also have the should also know the numerology of uh, of where the words are, of where the letters are, and all all of these other elements, which gets into uh, gematria. Therefore, it's overly complex, and I think that is the, the reason for its creation, that uh, if, you're, if you're not taught these elements from the beginning, you'll never know what you're saying or, or following, and you, if the the powers that be uh, know the language, you'll not understand or, or you know, understand, stand under you, <laughs> uh, what they're saying. And that's how you get tricked and scammed. And that's why the world is a you know, house of cards and, you know, going, going to Helsinki and back. Um, so basically, that's the, the 
you know, summary of, of the chapter. Uh, of course, we're getting into this is more on the business side, branding. Now, branding is related to more not just linguistics, but it's also images, colors, and so on. Um, it's all in one ball. And therefore, to create something, you should know all of the historical factors, whether it's, again, symbology, linguistics, uh, numerology. Then you can create a, an image or a brand that would actually be uh, locking the subconscious mind of the receiver, and they would never know why they like that because the mind is being tricked. It's like a hidden hook that pulls them into the brand. It, it's contradictory. It's, it makes them wonder, you know, maybe not directly, but you know, in the subconscious mind, they're wondering, what does that mean? Uh, of course, the, the more ignorant one is, or maybe more drugged out someone is, the less ability for them to seek a conclusion. So the key to all of this is you need to grasp what actually language is. That means the whole of it, linguistics and so on. And then you will get an understanding that you probably will begin to speak less um, <laughs> for various reasons. Uh, and um, you'll become a, a bit more wiser about, not bud wiser, but a bit wiser about what's going on in the world and why it is the way it is. Um, it's a very interesting topic. And I would suggest you get more into it. I studied neurolinguistic programming for years. I'm a master trainer in, in, the, area, in the field. Also mind mapping and, and other, let's say, uh, non-traditional uh, approaches to, to uh, finding the truth. Uh, I'd just like to point out that, remember, that language is, is a code. It's, it's very precise and exact. And when you use language versus, let's say you're meditating, there's no language involved, theoretically. When you're meditating, you are open, free. Let's say the mind is, is uh, still. I mean, there's, you're at peace. However, you're, you're contacting source or connecting to source. Now, language is a mechanical structure, and that's on the outside. So you have internal, external. Uh, so internally, you're doing, let's say, meditation or yoga. And externally, you're, you, you're, you're working on the outside of your, your, your body. And that, therefore, you're being, you know, like pro projecting outwards and you're living in the outside world. I have many videos, you know, sorry, many uh, materials on that where I make speeches and lectures uh, related to, to this idea and concept. Um, so, you know, again, the main thing I'd like to bring out in this is that language is a precise code, and whether you understand it or not, your brain will understand it and seek a conclusion. That being said, Pretty much no matter what you say, the receiving party is going to digest it, maybe consciously or, you know, subconsciously, and it will find a conclusion. <laughs> In other words, language is very powerful, helpful, and dangerous. Yeah, it's, it's words can kill, as they say. That would be another topic which we could get into. Um, anyhow, this is just like an introduction to that chapter, very, uh, uh intriguing and, uh, mind, uh, mind opening, uh, topics within there. 
So I hope uh, you know, one day you can actually buy the book, help support me in a way, or uh, you know you can Google it and find uh, I think the first uh, uh, fourteen pages are on there. Not my not my chapter because mine is uh, mine is at the end of the book. It has two hundred twenty page book. So we're going to end this one because it's up to twenty minutes and I don't want to bore you. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, thanks for listening. I hope you got something out of it. Um, I will see how I can work out this channel so that I can show, you know, slides or PPTs. Maybe I'll get a, a whiteboard or something so that we can make it a little bit more, more uh, educational or however you want to put it so you can actually read something or see some images and stuff. So thanks for listening this time. And, uh, you know, peace and love. Goodbye. Oh, I shouldn't say goodbye. I'll see you next time.